Hello and welcome for today's Cyber Talks on increasing popularity of web application security and the skills required to succeed to be presented by Mr. Patrick Vostige. I am Ritika Chakraborty and I will be your host for the day. For our attendees, the session will be in listen only mode and will last for an hour out of which last 10 to 15 minutes will be dedicated to Q&A. If you have any questions during the webinar to organizers or panelists, post your questions in the Q&A window. Also, if you face any audio video challenges, please check your internet connections or you may log out and log in again. An important announcement for certificate of attendance. Participants need to attend the complete webinar to qualify for the certificate of attendance. Participant should fill in the survey form in the attendees thank you email and answer the three questions based on the webinar provided with the right answers within the same day. If these two criteria are met, then only the participant will receive the certificate of attendance within five to seven business days after the event. Now about our speaker. Patrick Verstage believes he can make this world a better place through profound information and cybersecurity management. He constantly challenging traditional information and cybersecurity thinking. Though continuous training and education, he has positioned himself among the top information and cybersecurity professionals. His primary interest lies in the field of leadership, organizational behavior, and cybersecurity culture. Patrick has built and led information and cybersecurity teams around the world, leading strategic information and cybersecurity challenges. Within 20 plus years of experience in delivering strategic planning, engaging leadership, sharp analysis, and custom solutions, he ensures the business stay secure in the ever-changing security landscape. So now, without any further delay, over to you, Patrick. Thank you, Hitchika. Thank you, EC Council, and welcome all attendees. I'm totally excited and really psyched to be able to present in this new series uh, from EC Council University, uh, a, a institute that has given me so much uh, to the information security industry, uh, to me personally, and I'm happy to be able to give uh, something back. Um, a little bit about me, um, I, I think Hedrika did an excellent introduction, thank you for that. Um, to get a little bit more background, I'm Dutch, so we also tell always during these presentations something about ourselves. So I'm 64 years old, I have plus 20 years industry experience, so I come from the nitty gritty, being in the roots, being in the in the, in the network details, uh, I've never been a real programmer, but I, I was um, installing racking and stacking switches until I made it to the CISO position I am in now. I'm a self-employed consultant and I have uh, various engagements throughout the year and uh, throughout my business life. And as you can see, I hold um, some certifications. Uh, most of them are easy council certifications where I'm very, very grateful for. Uh, this is one of my profile pictures when I was a little bit younger. At the end, you will see one where I uh, show a little bit my, my, my real age. Um, this, is, this is really a personal presentation for myself. So these are my opinions, my ideas. Uh, they are not imposed on my, to me by EC Council or, or anybody told me what to tell, but they're also not the beliefs of the company that I'm currently engaged with, uh, um, Viterra, nor any other company I've been previously engaged with. And I need to make this real disclaimer that this is really a personal talk, something from my heart and something that I think is quite interesting. Um, 
you've all seen the agenda and the key takeaways on, on top web application vulnerabilities, defending web applications, the penetration testing demand, <coughs> and the role of the future. Um, so this will be not a talk about uh, the latest attacks on Colonial or JDS, where they went in through a, a, a unpatched RDP uh, software port, or um, uh, they used a phishing email. This is really about web applications and not on infrastructure. And I think there's a, a, a difference. If you have any questions during this presentation, please shoot a question in the question box, because I like to make it engaging uh, as, uh, uh, and, and open, uh, although we are all on, on laptops and in a remote session, I try to make it as interactive as possible. So please, uh, if you have any questions, um, please do. Um, so if we're going to take a look at the top web application vulnerabilities that, that are out there, there's a, a, a good resource that we always use for this, and that's the OS top 10. And if you're in the in the field and you're knowledgeable about information security, you possibly heard about it. But if you have not heard about it, it's a, a consortium of people working together, the Open Web Application Security Project. And they bring out this long list of 10, uh, uh, top 10 web application vulnerabilities that um, uh, are being exploited or being present in web applications uh, worldwide. This list is updated on, in a continuous cycle. I think the last one was from about two years ago. Uh, and this is just a brand new 2021 uh, list. And for me personally, I think there were three ones that stood out, which I want to address in more detail. And the other ones I'm going to touch on, on briefly. So the ones that uh, stood out for me were insecure design, which is actually new in 2021, uh, security misconfiguration, so that's number four, number five, and number six, vulnerable and outdated components. And before we dive into those, we'll have a, a small overview so that you get a, a little bit of a feel. And I hope to give some examples on the other ones as well. So if we look at the, <clears throat> at the first one, the uh, broken access control, um, these are, for instance, uh, problems that lie within your web application where it is able to traverse uh, directories. So the access controls, the least privileged access controls on your web application are not implemented correctly. So where would you see these, for instance, um, a, a web application that's hosted from a, from a, from a share uh, on your web server and just by very easily putting a, a commands after the URL, the web application bar, you can just browse the directory. That would be, for instance, one of the examples. Uh, another example here would be <clears throat> that um, while you are exposing an API to the web, so an application interface into your custom built application, you don't have the proper access control on those, or your put and, and, and get requests are not secured uh, um, accordingly. If we look at crypto, uh, cryptographic failures, which is on number two, um, this, this mostly goes about um, not using the proper protocols. So HTTP instead of HTTPS or FTP instead of FTPS, or for instance, not using um, uh, the right secure channels, <coughs> sorry, the, the right secure channels uh, within, within um, uh, the application on the inside. So it also goes into using old protocols. So for instance, uh, if you would be using SL, uh, uh, in your certificate, still allowing for uh, SSL uh, version two or version three instead of TLS, that would be a cryptographic failure as well. The injection uh, used to be a number one and used to be called a SQL injection, but that's basically sending malformed requests through the web application to the database to extract data. And if you do that correctly, and you were very profound with that, you will be also be able to upload data and upload code and upload other malicious um, uh, data into the web application. And that goes from just a, a simple defacement to full control of the web server and possibly building a pivoting point into the network that lies behind that. Uh, security design, security misconfiguration, and vulnerable and outdated components will dive a little bit on that uh, in just a second. 
Um, so if you look at identification and uh, authentication um, uh, failures, this goes, for instance, in the list to being able to um, do a brute force attack. So having a, a, a web component that asks for a password and a username, and then, then over and over and over be able to challenge those two boxes with new passwords and new usernames, or even with the same username and different passwords. So the brute forcing, but also allowing simple passwords like password one and admin admin as being authentication failures. Um, security logging and monitoring failures, it's, it's not actually a failure, but it's something that is missing so that you're not adequately looking at the logging and monitoring that should come from your web application. And that logging and monitoring has to be uh, programmed and built in that application separately. Um, there is a very good tool from Mitra, the Detect Framework, that can help you to visualize how this logging and monitoring should look like, uh, what you're missing, and how the addition of logging and monitoring can give you uh, better visibility into your environment. A server-side request forgery, that is when you have, for instance, a web application with a with, with a form there where you can post comments, and so we would put in a uh, in that form a comment with an URL that serves you malicious code or things like that. So these are the, 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 the top, this is the top list, and I will dive in the one that stood, stood out for me. Please, if you have any questions, feel free. I have the, the, the question box open, and uh, if there are any questions, I try to answer them as we go along. So um, this, this new one, this insecure design, is a new category for 2021. And the important thing is that security needs to be upfront, a front runner if it comes to web applications. So insecure design obviously does not go for um, an application that has been there for a longer uh, for a longer time. Obviously, they might have also insecure designs, but this is mostly about when you compile the technical requirements, you include functional and non-functional security requirements. And you don't you do that at the start of the project. So when a project starts, and it doesn't depend if you're using a full CI CD pipeline, if you lose Agile Scrum or a waterfall methodology, the functional and non-functional security requirements should be called out up front. And if you do that up front, you might even be able to mitigate, if not all of the vulnerabilities that were listed in the OWASP top 10 as shown just now. If you tell somebody up front, no, you can't use your own cryptographic module. No, you need to use HTTPS. No, you can't use uh, FTPS. No, you should have a lockout on this form where you ask for a username or password. Yes, you should have uh, input sanitation there to mitigate SQL injection. Then you're on the right track. So for me, this is one of the one of the first and front most important things that you need to achieve and mitigate when you're talking about web applications. Putting in these requirements upfront will directly lower your exposure risk to the other web application uh, failures that have vulnerabilities that I've shown you just now. Security misconfiguration. Um, so th this is something we've we've been handling, trying to handle since since the late 90s. Um, one of the most important things: anything you don't need on a web application, disinstall. Do not allow it. Change it, modify it, remove it. Any unnecessary port, any services, any pages, um, anything anything that's not the web application itself and is not part of the functionality of the product, you should remove it. A good example was, for instance, when we were still installing II7, so that's a long time ago, there was always this admin page available as a standard of the deployment. And if you forgot to, to deinstall it, you were just very easily to able to browse through that admin page and change all kinds of havoc. Um, hardening is something else that you need to consider. If you look at the platform that's doing the hosting, 
uh, not depending on, on, on Microsoft or, or Linux. Um, you should have proper hardening across the application stack and the underlying infrastructure and cloud services implemented. For your hardening for your web application, that's what you normally do by the design, the proper, the, the previous one, and implementing all these security controls. If you look at the application in your, your OS stack or your cloud stack, please refer to, for instance, sys baselines, uh, best practices that you will get from uh, your cloud service provider or your uh, OS provider. Uh, things that we see a lot also are default accounts and passwords that are still enabled and un unchanged. And um, it's, it's maybe a, a, um, a, a controversial topic, but uh, I know, for instance, that there was an adult website in the past a couple of years ago that was actually hacked through these default accounts and password not changed. The hacker group explained that they were preparing for the hack for about three months. And then when they did the actually attack, they hit the first firewall and that firewall still had their default account and password enabled and unchanged. So if you're going to take a look at your web environment and you don't know where to start, start on all the devices, all the products, all the operating systems, everything that you, you're utilizing that will have a login code or a password code or an admin code and take a look if that has been changed. What also happens sometimes if you upgrade the system, the system enables new enables you to have new security features, but they are not enabled and not configured by default. So you do the upgrade because you want the additional security features, but they're not enabled. So if you do such an upgrade, please check. And if you do an upgrade that says something about security, also check that the new, that the new upgrade did not disable or wrongly configure your security settings. And then obviously you can have in application servers or application frameworks or databases secure values uh, for SQL Server. You don't want the SA account, which is the system administrator account, also the account that allows you to connect to databases and reuse that same um, the same username and password. It's still uh, a, a bit uh, quiet on the questions, but if you have any, please drop in. Vulnerable and outdated components. Well, obviously, um, um, if you do not know what you're using, you, you're vulnerable because you, you don't know what your exposure is. So take a take a regular look uh, personally or um, uh, externally on um, the components that you're using. And, and if you need to scan for vulnerabilities, but you're on a tight budget, because you don't have the money to implement one of the top vendor products. Uh, there, there are open products there. There's, there's open wasp SAS that you can use, open via uh, open VOS that you can use. There is enough tools out there that will give you the insights you need on vulnerability management without needing to buy a, a very expensive contract if you cannot buy that. Um, apart from that, what we see is that Patching is lagging. Patching is always lagging. But then if you need to have a decision, you as a security leader, you as a security engineer, where to put your effort, do not put the effort on the systems that are behind that firewall, which are in a security zone tucked away in your infrastructure. Start with your outer harder shell. Start with patching your web applications, scanning for vulnerabilities in the infrastructure that you have on the externally exposed uh, uh, environment. Uh, and, and as you can see here on the slides, um, yeah, month, uh, uh, patching on a monthly or quarterly base, um, uh, it can be done, but only for the medium and high vulnerabilities. Critical, uh, medium, medium and low vulnerabilities, high and criticals, you should always patch as soon as possible. The good approach here is criticals within uh, externally exposed criticals within 24 hours, uh, high ones uh, uh, normally within a day or three, three or four, as highs tend to become critical over time as uh, exploit comes, quote, comes available through different channels.
So if we take a look at defending web applications, the first answer you will get from a security vendor or from a security engineer, or possibly from a CISO, it says, implement a web application firewall, because that's always a good idea. And I tend to agree, but I also tend to disagree. I think web application firewalls are just one of the controls you should have in a sound uh, protection scheme when it comes to web applications, but it's only on the on the on the on the protect side. And please bear in mind that no matter which tool you use, if it's in, in, in Perva, it's F5, or if you're just using ModD as a web application firewall, the layer of complexity of implementing and maintaining web application firewalls is tremendous, even if you put it in a um, blacklist mode. And the blacklist mode in web application firewalls is that you do not allow certain commands to be executed. Uh, if you want to go to a whitelist mode, that you only want to have certain uh, commands to be executed, that's even a bigger overhead, as you need to have somebody from the application side to help you and support you to keep understanding business logic as a change. So yes, web application firewalls are a good idea, but they're just one step. And please bear in mind the cost and the implementation time. I'd rather look at security by design. And security by design is not only laying out the ground foundation, giving rules, policies, procedures, standards, guidelines uh, on how applications should be programmed and what's allowed and what's not allowed, but also implement during the different phases of the deployment different types of tests. So as we are looking at, um, okay, I see that there are a few questions technical. You can have a look, uh, but I don't see the questions popping up. That's a thing. So Hitrika, can you please assist me, possibly put them in the checkbox because I don't see any questions. I will I will copy paste the questions to you. Uh, please, do, please do, please do. Um, as I'm waiting for the for the questions, which I'll start to answer. Um, if you look at a normal pipeline, and even if you have a, a CI/CD pipeline or a Scrum pipeline, you normally always see a, a development platform. You see a test acceptance platform, and you see a production platform. So what I what I su suggest you do is that in the in the development platform you integrate SaaS testing, so that's static static testing, and uh, Static testing can, for, for for instance, be done by uh, uh, every if you use Git, for instance, with every check in, check out, uh, you can have a, a a tool running in the background, and in that background, it already does some code verification, so that gives you some certainty on um, the quality of the code produced and how many flaws are in there, and it also gives feedback to the developer to see where he should change something. Um, Dust testing, dynamic testing, um, uh, 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 dust testing is a, a, a test methodology dynamic. Okay, let me take a look because now something, my chat window was gone. Here, here we go, here we go. Um, Dust testing is a dynamic testing where the interaction between components and the interaction between database and, and um, application and iOS platform is being uh, tested. So that, that's a good second step if you're moving from uh, the, the development environment to the test environment. Penetration testing, normally people would say, yeah, I want to do a penetration test on the outside of the uh, of the environment, and then, then I'm good to go. I would recommend doing penetration testing on the acceptance environment, uh, because penetration testing normally is scoped and limited, costs a lot of money, lots of, a lot of time. And by doing penetration testing on the testing environment, you can narrow it to just the change code or the new implemented code. And then I'm a big favor of bug bounty programs like HackerOne, ZeroCopter, and there are a lot of other bug bounty platforms out there. And just putting your web application in such a bug bounty program to ensure that you have a continuous pen test um, uh, uh, on your extern, ex 
externally exposed web application. I think that's a very, very good mitigation strategy uh, where you're in full control of the scope, full control of the amount of money you need to pay out, and you can arrange 24 seven testing on your web application instead of the penetration testing that you normally do with a certain scope, certain scope, certain time frame, just once a year. Before I go into harming and vulnerability management, let me take a look at the, at the first question that was copied to me. Um, it's a question from Shuham, Shubham by Paul. Sorry for the pronunciation, I'm, I'm Dutch. I don't know the web program languages like HTML, HTTP. Is it necessary to know these program languages for web penetration testing? Um, no, I don't think that you need full understanding of all these program languages for web uh, penetration testing. Some good grasp on how web applications work and to be able to read some code and to able to read some logic uh, that's always good but um for instance if you if you do like a a a a, um, a, a youtube or a a a a, a uh, other type of uh, easy um uh, pay pay course i know easy council has one in code red uh, that should be sufficient to bring you up to speed for uh, web application programming languages um i see more questions coming in um hitri guys there i have a little bit of difficulty reading all the questions um is there anything related to what i've presented until now which we need to address uh sure uh patrick you can continue with the presentation we can take the questions later is that okay, okay. it's good i'm trying to make it as interactive as possible could you please explain dust and sust maybe that's a good one to pick up um, Dust and SUST. Um, SUST is static application security testing. And basically what it means that or by means of an automated tool or by means by hand, you go line by line through the code and check the code for interdependencies in the code uh, and see if you can detect any security flaws. <clears throat> and, um, going line by line by hand uh, manual verification is very labor intensive and you have sometimes a hard time understanding the business logic after the uh, behind the code and therefore seeing the possible stack flaws i would recommend to use a tool for that there are tools available for that like equinetics for instance where you can just put the code into a toolbox it runs and it sends you back what it found on a line by line and interactive uh, comparison of the code. If you work with GitHub, there are even tools available that uh, integrate it to GitHub. So with every check-in and check-out of the code, you have this code validation that gives you a lot of certainty if there's any security flaws in the code. Dust is uh, a, a, let's say, a evaluation of that. After you've done proper SAS testing, you can do dust testing. And dust testing is dynamic application security testing and dynamic application security testing will test the interaction between the code and the operating system between the code and possible data uh, databases and the code and uh, libraries or dependencies that are on the system uh, there are also automated tools for that to do that but it's more on not taking an isolated view on what has been uh, produced but taking that what has been pre produced and putting that into context <clears throat> of the dynamics of the application. So I hope that that, that answered the question. <clears throat> a web application firewall is a hardware or software device. It can be both. So um, uh, a web application firewall might be mod D, which you can install on a Linux server as a add-on module to the uh, Apache um, uh, uh, web application, but you could also buy web application firewalls as a appliance. Uh, and obviously from that appliance, there are also uh, VMs available, but uh, F5 and Imperva have uh, web application firewalls, which you can buy as an appliance, for instance. So I went to some of the questions. I'll continue the presentation. <clears throat> So hardening, I already touched a little bit upon that topic, and hardening is 
making sure that you have the right security settings on the system, that you have um, uh, implemented the best practices from the vendor, that you deleted any services that you don't need on the system. The, the good thing about hardening is that it's for free. You only need to implement some hours. So some engineer has to take a look and fo follow the hardening guides. So there's no additional license cost, software cost, productivity cost there. It's just people who need to do something. And normally you can have people assign just this task. And vulnerability management, we also talked about that. Just scanning on a regular base. Is your system patched? Is it updated? Do you have old components in there? And you by by hand is almost impossible, but you don't have to buy the very expensive products. You can start with OpenVAS or with OSAP or with any vulnerability management tool. Um, any recommended tool to check unused ports in a web app? Yes, I would definitely use an Nmap scan. Uh, uh, Nmap, uh, uh, and you 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 use it. Uh, that's a question from Van Van Buchanan. Uh, Nmap is just a a, a tool uh, which is present as as a download for Linux or for Windows. It's part of the Kali Linux suite. Uh, you can set some parameters on that, and then it just runs to a whole stack of web applications or just one web, web application and see what what open ports are in there um i'm a bit time conscious so um if we took at the 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 the, the web penetration testing demand there's a huge demand of people uh being able to do uh, uh penetration tests and and that's why i also say that this bug bounty idea it's such a good idea because these people are very expensive uh, at least a thousand a hundred thousand dollars a year uh, in the us it's very hard to fulfill this position uh you just get one candidate per opening uh, the demand is increasing uh job postings are open for more than 60 days so it's really really tough to get somebody into that position uh from external and th the question also is how can you attend how can you attend these people how can you keep them working with your company um <clears throat> then web application demand uh, continued so you can take a look at, at your current workforce but if we take a look at the current workforce people who are traditionally currently are in in, in web application penetration testing these are the little bit younger people they're much more tech savvy uh, and we call them uh, millennials or generation Y. And uh, it's good to know, good to remember that they don't work for money. Money is something that you get for doing your work and it should be enough, but it's not their main driver. Their main driver is that they want to work on new technologies. They want to have time for their families. Uh, they want to have, uh, um, they want to be recognized uh, for their achievements. It, they should work in a team. So be very, very um, conscious of these kinds of people who are working in your company. And if they're working in security and as a penetration tester, because attending them is not, you get paid and therefore you need to do the money. You need to motivate them on a different scale. It goes in way too much deep how to motivate millennials, but please take a look at the age of your pen testers. If you have them in your company, to see how you can attend them, keep them motivated and interested to stay with your company. Um, give some place for automation. Yes, there are automated tools there for free. Take a look at the OAS site. Uh, there are other initiatives available, but also take a look at commercial products um, uh, and, and, and make way for automation. Uh, running the port scan, as we just discussed with Nmap, uh, that's an idea to do once to, to, to make a proof of concept but you don't want to do that uh, against a stack of maybe 10, 20, 100, 200, 2,000, 3,000 web applications. Then you want to have an automated process that gives you automated reporting. Uh, that's way too much uh, manual overhead. Um, yeah, adopt cloud-based security tools and solutions. Um, as I said earlier, take a look at bug bounty programs. Very flexible, very handy. Gives you 24 seven the ability to launch a, a um, penetration test against your environment. 
and use targeted penetration tests where necessary. These, these penetration tests are costly, they're time boxed, they're money boxed, uh, and that gives you a little a limited scope and a limited depth. And that's why uh, uh, you should only use them on very targeted uh, instances. <clears throat> and then junior employees, um, you need to train your junior employees. Um, so ensure that you have budget and time. Uh, do not only train juniors, but also if you're somebody uh, who's who's authoring your company and still interested in security, train them as well, and, and take a look at at the various options available. Um, I was very impressed with the EC Council, the new web application track they have. It's not expensive. It's only a thousand dollars. It gives great value for money. And if you want to move into penetration testing, it's definitely something to check out. So key takeaways, integrate security in your development process. It's, it's, it's key. If you are a company that's developing and developing their own web application, be a front runner. Talk to the project leads, talk to the developers, start explaining that security is key. Give them guidelines, processes, procedures, uh, find web pages for them. Um, for PHP, I know, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there are seven different ways to program uh, crypto, but only three are secure. Point out what those three are and do the same for any other languages that you're using. Um, make sure that you have a priority of a solution-based program rather than tools-based. And that the act actually means is that you need to take a look at the, at the whole stack and not just implement a tool and think you're secure. So for instance, circling back to the web application firewall, I have insecure web applications, so I put in a web application firewall and then I'm secure. No, you put in a web application firewall just to mitigate the problems that you have, but it doesn't make you secure. Integrated in your security development process would make you secure. Um, ensure that the pipeline of security ta talent that you can retain them, as I spoke, take a look at those millennials and what they need, and it's not just money, and make sure that you have proper training and education for those people. Uh, no training or no education in a year is almost setting people two or three years back and making sure uh, uh, that, that they're going to leave. So basically you should have training and education options and budgets available for people. Uh, take a look at the, at the at the program of EC Council if you if you don't know where to start. They have a great university and great uh, uh, great uh, 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 tracks. Uh, from from very beginner to uh, uh, master uh, certified ethical hacker tracks, and and in the end, uh, ensure that you have a cultural transformation around security and uh, IT in, in in the IT teams, and that just begins. My suggestion would be where to start for the last one. Tomorrow, when you come in the office, take a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, or whatever you drink. Don't sit behind your desk if you're back in the office, but start wandering around. Uh, if COVID and Corona permits, just walk around, start to talk to people, show your face and tell them something about security. And that will start the cultural transformation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patrick. This was very, very insightful and informative session. I hope the audience enjoyed the session and we hope it was worth of their time. So uh, this session is in sync with EC Council's WAHS program. EC Council's Web Application Hacking and Security is a specialization certificate that enables you to learn, hack, test, and secure web applications from exciting and emerging security threats in the industry verticals. It's 100% hands-on challenge-based learning where you get to learn by doing. There is no death by PowerPoint. You can follow the instructor as they make their way through these challenges. If you are a penetration tester, ethical hacker, security engineer, auditor, red team engineer, vulnerability analyst, incident responder, this specialization program is for you. 
if you are interested to know more kindly take part in the poll that's going to be conducted now it's a complete digital course where you have everything videos labs exam is one package get certified as a web application security associate professional or an expert now we will start with the q a session and answer some questions that were sent to us during the presentation now over to you Khaled. thank you so much ritika um uh, thank you so much again patrick so we'll take up some of the questions which um yeah. had come in and also for our attendees you can also send us uh, some additional technical questions to the speaker we can if there is time we will still take them Okay, so the question is, you stated about the four different ways uh, to defend web applications. Which one of them is the best to go for? And can one run all the four side by side? Yes, so so, so um, uh, I, I think it's about, um, if I recall correctly, it will be about the dust, sust, penetration testing and web bounty. Uh, otherwise it would be the other one. So it goes in, in, into several layers. So um, um, if you if you if the question is referring to the track of uh, SUST, dust, penetration testing, and bug bounty, uh, these are chained. This is a follow-up structure. So you first do the the um, uh, uh, SUST training, the static, then the dust, then the penetration test, and then the bug bounty. If it goes about using web application firewalls, hardening vulnerabilities and um uh and the design uh yeah these also run in parallel um it, it goes about that if you look at a a nist cyber security framework you have uh, identified detect protect respond and recover as the five top uh priorities to focus on so web application firewalls they do the the the, the protect if you do the design, you're focusing on the identify part. And so this is how you could plot all different types and technologies to get a full coverage of web application uh, security and not just focusing on one solution. And it comes also back a little bit on my last slide where I say, well, don't, don't focus on a tool stack, just put in just one, but use the whole stack. Start with the design, uh, implement web application firewalls, uh, make sure you do the proper testing, uh, those kinds of things. I hope that answers the question. Uh, I hope it does too. So next question is from Felix and he asks, is it advisable to directly put a web application on a public IP address, public IP configured on a web server? Okay. Um, so from a security uh, professional, you would get a risk-based answer on this. It's, it's a little bit depending. If this is a web application that, that just puts out a web page that, that posts out, um, tomorrow there will be a free dinner at my house, as an example. Uh, there's no backlog connectivity. There's no other applications in that IP. There's there's nothing else there, just, just a web server showing that page. And it's just for a select amount of people. Uh, you could have a discussion about if you want to do that like that. And, and if you're afraid of defacement, but if you're not, yeah, you, you could be good to go. Um, if this is a web application that exposes internal networks, business logic, has database connections, multiple web servers uh, in that same private IP, uh, in the sa same public IP range, I would recommend having some firewalls up front that, a, a, a web application firewall loaded, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there are uh, possibly load balancers, um, uh, so there's not an easy answer there. If, if you want to have just a straight yes or no answer, the answer will be no. You need to take a lot more of security measures to ensure that your web application firewall is uh, protected, monitored, secured. Okay. So the next question is, uh, does web vulnerability dependent on programming language? Web, uh, I think I saw the question, web application uh, um, uh, testing. Uh, is this about the testing question or is it just about if a vulnerability exists in a different language? Um, 
I think different language. Okay, so basically web application vulnerabilities can be programmed into uh, any type of application, not depending the language, because it's not depending on the language, but it's began because of the absence of uh, proper guidelines on programming. So it's a, it's a generic one. So web application vulnerabilities, you find them in any program language. Program yes, language that's... independent. So he further elaborates, do the choice of programming language increase or decrease vulnerability in the web app? No, no. Uh, um, uh, possibly some program languages as they involve will mitigate some of the OWASP top 10 uh, web application vulnerabilities better than other ones, but it's not like I can choose a web application programming language that's secure by default because the to be honest, the mistakes are made by humans and not by the application, by the by the language. Okay, so the next question is by Jumerin from Malaysia, and he says, how serious is the data leaks exposures during the pandemic? Sorry, can you repeat that question? He says, how serious is the data leaks exposure during the pandemic? So what we've seen is that the data leak exposure during the pandemic on web applications has gone go down, but we saw a tremendous um, rise in data leakage and exposure on uh, not web applications through ransomware attacks. So, so the shift from the attackers focused from web applications for the pandemic time towards uh, non-web applications, like for instance, exposed RDP uh, connections and exploiting the blue key for ability. Okay, um, so the next is by Ankur and he asks, what are the emerging technologies in the web app to look out for in future? Um, I think the most important ones are the serverless applications that you can find in cloud environments. So Google, Azure, and AWS provide you with these logic tools to build web applications, which are not even built on, on an infrastructure anymore, that just give you functions. And I think if, if you wanna, my, my guess would be to focus on these because they're going getting used more and more by developers. Uh, and that, that might be the, the most interesting shift for the next coming years to follow. Okay, um, so I think we'll take up the last question and it's by Ed and he says, there's been a rise in the cloud-based pen testing. How trustworthy is that? <laughs> um, well, the, the problem with, with, with pen testing is that it's dependent on the intelligence of the persons conducting those pen tests. So cloud-based pen tests um, are not or, or the services are not better or worse than what you have with a normal pen test engagement where you can actually see and touch the people. It's all depending on the credibility and the resumes of the people who are conducting those pen tests. Um, and that's why I like the, like the bounty program so much. So if you are taking a look at a cloud-based pen test, ask if they can provide you with guaranteed resumes of people who are conducting these pen tests. And you should look for certifications like CH, LPT, OCSP, th those, those kinds of certifications that can give you a guarantee, okay, the people are certified, they know what they're doing, <clears throat> and they can run actual those kind of pen tests. Um, so so, so, so that, that's on the pen test part. If you look at the bug bounty programs, that, that's quite interesting because that are people who are very profound in hacking, uh, but do it often as a hobby. So, so somebody's popping into a platform, taking a look at a web application, then thinks, okay, maybe something is here, uh, but I don't have the time now and don't have the idea. Drops off the platform, goes at home, plays with an Xbox or a PlayStation. And then suddenly after three days, something pops into his mind, <clears throat> goes back on the platform, tries to exploit it and finds an actually a vulnerability into your environment. Uh, and those are very valuable. And, and it, they're, they're quite cheap because such, a, such an exploit that a person finds might be $1,500 on a big bounty platform. So for you as a company, they're a very cheap find 
because this this person was thinking about three or four days to find this exploit and found it and gets paid fifteen hundred dollars cheap for us and a lot of money for the people on the bug bounty programs so that's why i love them so much because the the time frame of people taking a thought process and seeing and thinking about if actually something is wrong with your web application is much longer than with a pen test okay i think we'll just take one last question sorry i'm uh taking no one problem. last yeah so sort of says in the defending web application is it possible that any exploit can cross the firewall and attack to the web servers and what happened when any exploit breached the data of the web server and how do you fix it okay so there are multiple questions there uh let, let's let's break them down to 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 the first question i think the first question was can an exploit of a, of a web server surpasses the firewall yes and attack the web so is it possible that any exploit can cross the firewall and attack the web server yeah. um i understand the question uh but a problem lies in uh, uh a, a little bit of a deeper understanding so I'll take 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 a minute for that um i i hope you're profound with the oc model um uh that's a model that describes how technical components work together it's it's an infrastructure you often use for infrastructure um uh, uh descriptions how how components interact with each other so how a web application uh interacts with with the underlying application and then with the operating system and then with the protocols used and technology used really down to the cables and taking a very generic approach, your firewall, your, your generic firewall that you have normally stops somewhere at layer four or five, so somewhere, next generation firewalls. Your application is on level seven. So exploits in the web application always surpass the firewall. The firewall does not help you with any web applications unless it's a web application firewall and they reside on level seven, but it's a different type of firewall. It's not even the next generation firewall, which has all these nifty features like IDS and IPS in there. It's, it's actually a different technology that lies on a different layer. So to ask your first question, to answer your first question, yes, ex web application exploits surpass the firewall because they always do. Uh, and the second question was, <clears throat> um, what happened when they exploit the breach, uh, exploit and breach the data of the web server? How do you fix it? We, um, well, well, the first thought would be uh, uh, taking the web the web server offline, and then start doing your own investigations and and reconfiguration. And it, it's also depending on what they found. Is it in, is it like broken code? Is it is it broken authentication? Is it is it uh, a, a bad programming language? Is it outdated uh, outdated uh, libraries that they use? Uh, so that's the fix. But when the date when they exfiltrate the data, uh, the data is gone. The data is copied, and you you can't fix that. That's only you need to get, go to the authority and and uh, and press press charges or make a notification to. Uh, your uh, um, uh, privacy accounts or something like that. Uh, fixing that, yeah, fixing just takes time. So best remediation, if you find a problem with a web application, my first immediate action would be taking it offline and then figuring out what happened, what went wrong. Okay, so thank you so much, Patrick. I think You're that's welcome. the end to the Q&A. Um, and thank you so much for answering it so patiently. It was no really a great presentation also. Thank um, you. So happy to do, happy, happy to, to attend, happy to get the presentation. And uh, I'm pretty if there's sure any I think, yes, all the attendees have written great comments about you and they are thanking you for being uh, so informative for them. Uh, so yeah, so this ends the session, Patrick. We hope to have you thank again you. on CyberTalks. I hope so too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. Have a great day. Bye-bye, everybody. The... Thank you for attending. Thank you, Easy Council. Thank you. This ends the session, guys. You may disconnect your lines. Bye-bye.